I feel like your ability to be very picky in particular is actually a uh, characteristic that I wish I had had and that, you know, sometimes the bar is just too low, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I feel like even for myself, I just feel like the bar had just been too low for so many years where it's just everyone can access the bar. <gasps> but I feel like sometimes there's like this societal pressure, especially on black women, to just make sure that the bar is reachable. Mm. And I feel like we have to be careful about that because then if everyone can reach the bar, then there's no real standard of, you know, the Shana, partnership. Lashana, you just preached the whole sermon right there. <laughs> I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> We share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people, it means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, LaTerris R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with <laughs> us, go ahead and hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, if it allows you to rate this episode, go ahead and rate it and leave a review. Uh, when you do that, it allows the podcast to... Uh, Hit that beautiful algorithm and notify other people that we do exist on these streaming platforms. So thank you so much. Uh, we consistently rank top 10 on Apple Podcasts, and I thank y'all so much. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. In a lot of countries, we're number one. Um, and a lot of those countries I do want to visit, y'all been DMing me saying, hey, can we come and do a live podcast in your country? Hey, make it happen. Hit me up. Let me know. Um, and we'll definitely come. But listen, today's episode is going to be absolutely beautiful. I saw these, this beautiful couple on IG and I said I want to know more about their story. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My new homies, Deshauna Barber and Marvin Eccles. What's going on, y'all? Hello. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> so I saw a video of y'all's, um, I guess that was in July. And yeah. I saw a video mm -hmm. and I DM'd you about that video and I yeah. said, listen... Are y'all married? Are y'all engaged? I would love to have y'all on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Do you remember what video that was? That was. It was like our love story video that I had posted some some time ago. Well, if this face looks familiar to y'all, <laughs> where would people know you as? As Miss USA 2016. We got Miss USA in the <laughs> building. You understand me? So, um, Marvin. Yeah. When you met this queen, yep. uh, did you meet her as a queen or you just met her as a as a regular person? Was she just somebody that was she already Miss USA when you she met her? She was already Miss USA, um, but she just exuded queen. So I was already like, yeah, let me see what's up. Were you intimidated a little bit? <laughs> um, actually, no, I wasn't intimidated. I was more intrigued. Mm. Mm. I was more intrigued. Um <laughs> We actually met at my uh, line brothers and her um, pageant sisters, mm -hmm. um, Chris and Vicky's wedding. Yeah. And um, I was like, who is this? Like, I need to really, I knew who she was, but I wanted to know, like, who is this? Mm -hmm. So um, I introduced myself. Um, and then after I introduced myself, I went to go ask Vicky about her. So I asked Vicky about her and she was like, nah, she's not available. So I was like, oh, damn. Well, hold up. I want to start right, stop right there. That's perfect. <laughs> she wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And so this episode is affectionately titled The Faithful Journey. Yes. yes. The Faithful Journey. A lot of y'all, I mean, when I was talking to y'all, y'all said that the the road to this beautiful uh, love story had mm -hmm. its twist and turn. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people, we don't hear that word fate a lot. We hear mm -hmm. the word faith 
but F-A-T-E, and I want to take a moment to define what F-A-T-E, fate, means. The development of events beyond a person's control regarded mm-hmm. as determined by a supernatural power. I like that. I like it, too. Do you feel like there was some supernatural power pulling y'all together? I do. There, I feel like there was a lot of coincidence going on throughout the past few years, Um and when it, we say we was unavailable, I was unavailable as in I was just, I was single, but I wasn't emotionally available. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was really great that my close friend, Vicky, knew to say she's not emotionally available. Did she say emotional or she said available? I, she I think said she said unavailable. unavailable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my Which thing is, is even if, <laughs> like, it don't matter which, if you're unavailable, you're unavailable. <laughs> right. So it was good for her to say that because uh, I had just gotten out of a really bad situation, a bad long-term relationship. So she knew to be able to say that she's not in a good headspace right now. For and that was in 2017? 2017, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, so then how did y'all actually connect? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so our friends, um, his line brother in particular is Bahamian. So I go down and visit them in the Bahamas every single year. And in 2018, a year after we met at the wedding, mm-hmm. I went down to visit mm-hmm. them in the Bahamas and we were having a car ride back and they were like, yeah, one of um, my, he said, one of my fraternity brothers was interested in you at the wedding. I said, oh, really? Who? He said, his name is Marvin and showed me his Instagram. And I said, oh my gosh, looking at his Instagram profile picture, I was like, he's on my Instagram story every single day. <laughs> every single day, this like Instagram bring, brought, brings him to the top of my viewers. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not following him at all. So I'm just like, who is this guy? But I never knew because his page was private. So hold on, stop. Why is that? Yeah, I always wonder why people have private pages. Yeah, why? why? I don't know. My page is <laughs> just open pro- now, yeah, it's open now. Yeah. Um, and I actually don't like people having private pages. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was private back then. Yeah, it was private. So mm-hmm. I why I, though? Why was it? Private? I have no idea. I wonder. I just I feel like when you have your page private. You get to see who follows you. I just wanted to be like, okay, this Every person time, is you in control. See. Yeah, I want to be mm. able to see who, yeah, you know. Mm. <laughs> it was private. But, but you saw his face pop up all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. And I said, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's Mom, on my Instagram story like every that? day. So this is the thing, oh, right? Wow. <laughs> so let's let's talk about let's it. Let's talk about it. So after she told me that, um, Vicky told me that she was unavailable, I still was like, well, let me, you know, I, follow, I followed her mm-hmm. and I, you know, Aside from everything, like I was just like, she's beautiful, she's on it, like she's she's just doing so much things that I just like. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's the follow just came. And so she would always be at the top of my story. And she knows like when I go through stories, I just click. Yeah. Whoever she's the first looking. person up there, I'm going through the stories. So she would always be first and I would always be clicking. Did you click on there where it notified you to be like for for her to be priority? <laughs> No, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> you can make people stories your priority. Yeah, you make you, you say you want them to be the first you see where they drop a comment, whether they yeah, post a story no, yeah, and all that. Oh yeah. no, I didn't yeah. know you could do that. Especially yeah. back in 2017. Yeah. 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 I don't know that. Yeah. yeah, but so yeah, she would always be the first. And um I just liked everything that she was doing. So mm-hmm. I'm like, in, in my mind, and also she was in DC too. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, and you were living where? I was in St. Louis. So mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest like I'm not going to pursue a relationship and I know it's going to be long distance, especially that amount of long distance. But mm-hmm. I still thought she was an amazing person regardless. So Were you dating during that time? Um at the time I wasn't dating. Um I dated a little bit throughout that the time yeah. that we actually mm-hmm. before we actually became a couple and started really dating, but I was but at that time I wasn't dating. And you saw that she was long distance and you just kind of felt like there was no hope. So not going to happen. <laughs> I, just, I just knew that that was not some a relationship what you was that I wanted. And then she had so many followers. I'm like, this, you know, she ain't going to see nothing. My little, <laughs> my little story view in here. So how was you able to see him all the time and you saw Fate. Fate. <laughs> because if I'm not following him, usually they push your followers yeah. to the top. I have no idea why Instagram prioritized his and, you and put him at the very top. over a hundred something thousand followers yeah, but, at the yeah. time too. I don't know how that was the, the case. So after I told them, oh, you know, he's always on my Instagram like oh you know they're like you should reach out and I said no 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 he's eventually gonna say something <laughs> so <laughs> a said. year goes by you said he gonna eventually he's gonna eventually some... message me and say something you felt that? I hoped for it <laughs> assumptions <laughs> so a year goes by he still has not said anything right so what now happened you? 
my thing is she was unavailable. And at, she's still that's in 2017. D- that's 2017, but she unavailable, and you still in DC. Fine. <laughs> this is a, that's not a long. Time. I don't want a long distance relationship that distance. <laughs> anyway, so he still thinks I'm unavailable. So that's 2018 when I tell them that you know he's always on my story. So a year goes by, and now we're in 2019. Paul, Paul, Paul. What 2019. happened? I just think that it's funny. I always oh think that gosh, it's funny that we met in 2017. This was a whole year later. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you still assumed I was gonna come with the same smoke. Of course. <laughs> Why a whole are you not year later. She said, you, she said, don't you see me? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, okay, he's she eventually said, gonna give in and say, Oh, you know, hey, how's it? He's gonna slide in my DMs at some point. Like if you're interested, you're interested. You was unavailable a year ago. <laughs> oh, exactly. A year ago. <laughs> he wanted you to make a post and say, Now open for business. No, I'm tell me like, <laughs> you know, I, I just feel like when a man is intentional or persistent, he's gonna be intentional and persistent. Forever. But I guess <laughs> forever. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. But in his mind, I think he's like, I tried once, ain't happened, and then he's throwing in the towel. Because my thing is, if you were unavailable, if I don't know that you are available, then you're still unavailable. You can go check and knock on the door and see if the restaurant opened up. You check. <laughs> Even if you reach out to Vicky, you could have checked. Uh, different strokes, different folks, okay. I guess. All right. <laughs> so a year goes by after my 2018 conversation, and um, he still has not reached out. So... One day I'm on my Instagram story. I see him in it, of course. And I'm like, you know what? I'm fed up. Okay. I'm fed up at this point. So I message him and I. So it had to be a little interest on your side then, huh? Well, I thought he was cute. Yeah. From what I could tell from the profile picture and the pictures that they showed me in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't remember meeting him fully at the wedding, in my mind, I felt like he was attractive. And they said he's a really nice guy. Right. So, you know, I trust my friends. You trusted, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Mm -hmm. because I trusted them, they're like, you know, you guys would do really well together. I'm like, oh, you know, he'll, he'll message me. Year goes by, I'm fed up, and I messaged him verbatim and I said, Are you gonna speak? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. And then what'd you say back? I probably said something sarcastic, like, Oh, you see me? Yes, that is what you said. Yeah. He says, Oh, so you can see me? I said, Yeah, I see you on my story every day. Are Dang. you going to speak? Mama, what'd you say? You can see me? I said, you know, I was trying to play it off, but I'm like, oh, you see me? Like the fact that you see me on the story and came out, reached out to me. Like, you got over 100 something thousand followers. I thought I was just under the radar. Like, oh, he's a dope person. Instagram prioritized you every day. Look, look, look what Instagram did. Every Listen. day. Gave you the live. Mm-hmm. We, talk, we talk bad about Literally. Instagram, but you do some good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're thankful to Instagram for this situation. For real. <laughs> and so you said you see me, and then what happened? So then we started chatting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to tell them this part? Because um, we have, a different, we have we, a different perspective. We started chatting. Um... <laughs> Because I live in Chicago now. In 2019, looked, I moved to Chicago. She moved to Chicago in 2019. But 2019, I was not actually interested in a relationship. At really? That point. Yes. What happened? Why? Was you um, dating somebody else? Tw- no, no, no. I wasn't dating anybody else. I was just very, like, steadfast into my career. Like, I was... Mm-hmm. See, men gra- be doing that. Men would, no. men would just get caught up on a career and be like... As and forget you everything. Should. <laughs> As forget you should. Forget everything. Take care of your goals and your found, <laughs> set your foundation first before you're even mm-hmm. thinking about a relationship. But at first you wasn't like that. So what? But in 2017, I was interested though. I was interested, but then in 2019, I, I started, especially getting into my career. I was like, no, I need to really. It was I had other. I set goals from the mm-hmm. last two years, mm-hmm. so I was very goal driven in in trying to get my career and stuff like that. I was applying for grad schools. Um, I was trying to get into engineering school. Um, to get my master's done, so my like my focus was just not on relationships mm-hmm. at that point too. So that's interesting. That's why I say fate will have it because at the end of the day, it's like you got to meet somebody at the right time right. at the I'm right you. heart space and the right you. somebody getting out of relationships, somebody trying to get into one, somebody ain't wanting to get in a relationship, mm-hmm. somebody like people taking breaks, people going through their healing journey. Yes. While you over here saying I want to be married, and they like, hey, I ain't even thinking about going on a date with somebody. <laughs> yes. It's just this love journey is a trip. I'm telling you. So, Timing is everything. Timing is everything. Mm-hmm. So let's continue to unpack this fateful journey. Great. Right. Mm-hmm. And so now she reaches out. She lives in Chicago at the time when y'all start talking about, do you see me? Mm-hmm. And, and you're not quite interested anymore. How right. did that shift? Um, so it's interesting. So I kind of wasn't in a wasn't in the space to actually be in a relationship, but I still thought that she was an amazing person. So I still wanted to get to know her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was okay with like, oh, okay, well, let's just, you know, see, you know, what this could be just as a, even a platonic relationship right. at this time. Cause I'm not, 
necessarily interested in a relationship. I think she had other other plans. Other plans. Talk about Deshaun. Go so ahead. what I did was I was planning, of course, my annual trip to the Bahamas to see my friends, which is also his friends. <laughs> you know, we, I'm about to go to the Bahamas uh, to do you? a live podcast. Oh, you're going to yeah. enjoy it. I have a yeah, friend, uh, Corel, that is organizing um, for us to go down there. Are you going to Nassau? We're going to go to Nassau and it's another one because we're going to do both cities back to back. What's uh, the other one? Nassau and the something. She had hit me up on we WhatsApp about go it. To Nassau, so I don't, but the, I don't there's mean, the one with the pigs. I'm not um, sure. He <laughs> said the one with the pigs. Let's oh see. my gosh! What is the name of it? Where the uh, that that festival was supposed to be? The fire festival. Free, we're going to Freeport. Oh, okay, Freeport. Okay, yeah. I've been to Freeport. Freeport I'm and, of a different spot. Yeah, Freeport oh, and Nassau. So I'm not sure. I forgot yeah. what it was called. But um, so that's you're going to have plan. a really great time. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm looking we forward to it. We go every single year. We were just there for New Year's, mm-hmm. so we visit our friends every year. So I'm planning my annual trip, and I said to him, hey, you know, I'm going to the Bahamas. Did you want to come along? And oh, you yeah, invited him on a trip. Yes, yeah, so we could see our friends, you know, <laughs> kind of have this moment where knock out two birds with one stone so mm-hmm. I get to see him and then we both get to see our friends hold mm-hmm. on hold on now hold on how you feel about that I was down yeah I was like okay but how did you feel for her to actually invite you like that she see she she, um, she basically invited you on a date <laughs> ex- I want you to remember that she just said that <laughs> exactly this is a trip where it's just Kind of a nudge into some direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was nice, but I thought, but it was more so planned. It's like, oh, we're gonna see friends. I'm, we're gonna see friends. Oh, mm-hmm. since nah. we met at the, we met. Nah, we met, we, no. Listen, I had listen, other wait, nah. wait. A woman invites you on a trip. Listen, <laughs> so it's like, oh no my god, reunion. I'm going to see Vicky and Chris. You should come too. So I'm like, okay, I'm down. This this will be a lit trip. I could, you know, see my friends, and then I'll, I could, you know. We can, you know, see see what's up. Or, you, know. you got this beautiful woman yes. inviting you on a trip. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, we're just going to see some friends. We're just, we're we're just going to have... We're see some friends, but, you know, it's it's a it's a Crazy. thing for us. But I feel like the the mask for, like, okay, just even if it is, I could get away with just saying we we went to visit Of course. That, that'd, be your, that'd be your excuse. That's the escape route. Yeah, you exactly. know? And I was down for it. So, so what what happened when we got there? Yeah, what happened? You tell me. He <laughs> He ignored me the whole time. That is not true. That is what happened. That, that is not is true. That's what happened. That is not true. It's, Mom, it's, you, Mom, you, you were that, so standoffish. I couldn't. I was telling Vicky. He said, I was he ready to book a flight home. You weren't now, trying to give her no, no hints or clues or nothing, huh? Listen, nothing. she is gassing this <laughs> to the 10th degree. But let me tell you, we both came down there, I think, with two different she, she expectations. Did. expectations. She did. Exactly. Yes. So I felt like hers was set on this. She said, I want to see if there's I, romance. I'm to try to pursue me she said, she said, I want to see if romance can, yeah. can, yeah. can, can be fostered in this trip. We have yeah. this beautiful island. Yeah. We're around comfortable people, which is a perfect atmosphere yeah. because y'all, like you said, you have an escape plan. You mm-hmm. have somebody else yes. that y'all have mutual relationship right. with where y'all can be chilling and be at ease with. But then also she like, hey, I want some alone time where we can try to create yes. whatever we got right here. And in your mind, you're like, I am career focused right Right now, mm-hmm. I am focused on. But this. I was going with the flow. You wasn't. I no, was going with the flow. I was going he with was the very flow. You couldn't go with, with the flow if you if your, if your mindset was like I'm no I'm no longer interested like that. Well, mm. f- well hold on. <laughs> I was interested in a relationship, but I was still interested saying. in still like and getting to I'm know not her looking to be this man's yes. friend. Yes, yes, like, yes, everybody try to be your friend, like. How am I, I supposed telling, to know that? I was telling Vicky literally the whole time, I'm like, girl, what is up? Like, is he okay? She's like, oh, I just think he's just nervous to be around you. And I'm like, I, this doesn't feel like nerves. This feels like a man that's literally not interested, yeah, right? Yeah. And, you know, as someone that is a beauty queen, Miss USA, yeah, I'm not used to, used to no. a see, man let's get that's down not to interested. Yeah, let's on. get down let's to it. That. No, no, no. Let's, yeah. get, let's, let's really that's break true. it down. Yeah. I feel like because she is such a beautiful woman that she's used to men like 100%. bowing at her feet, well, showing not so, bowing. Listen, but just kneeling. A little so bit. just yeah, kneeling. You know, just one knee instead of both. Kneel. You know what I'm saying? So like, as far as you know, showing interest, like going to the utmost to the point yeah. where like I don't have to do nothing. These men are coming to me. Well, I'm like, yeah, you're a beautiful woman. We're going to see our friends. I'm going with the flow. Like, yeah, what's, 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 yeah, what's up? 
And she she wanted me to be like, she wants you to Hello, shoot your Deshana, shot. I have yes. I've been waiting on you since 2017, <laughs> and um now that we have this moment, I just want to spend the rest of my life with you. That is not player at Something. all. That but 2017, not, you would have 27. I would have what? You would have did that. You would have gave him <laughs> what you were I looking for. Never did did it like that. He it would have still been smooth, but it would have been interesting. I'm talking about 2017. Who were you in 2017 when you said I would and talk to her friend uh, and ask and I inquired about her? Right. How would you have approached her? If, if, if the friend said, hey, listen, shoot your shot, she's available, mm-hmm. then how would you approach them? I, I would approach it, but it still would have been like, I listen, it still would have been a smooth get to know you. I know smooth, but so, so it would start off with a platonic interest? Like you just well, went. my thing is if I'm sh- if I'm interested in showing and I'm, if I'm interested in getting to know you, yes. it has to start off where I have to get to know you first. Right. You can't just jump into just I want to be with you. If I'm saying that I'm interested into it because I I like her on the outside, she's beautiful. Right. Before I even get to how get to like a relationship, I need to know who this person is. Facts on the inside first. So it actually would have started off as. Kind of more so platonic getting to know you. Of course, it had been courting and dating and stuff like that, but it had really been but, awesome. But, but, but was she been confused on the onset? Would she have known from day one, this guy likes me? Nope. Yes, she would have. No, you're Gemini. <laughs> yeah, you can't she nothing with y'all Geminis. Y'all dry. <laughs> like y'all's, y'all's pursuit is very strange. It I really is. I don't think is. it's strange. I just feel like people actually, I actually feel like people need to take time. I agree, with, I, agree with I agree with that. So I agree with that. I agree with So listen, I still got to get to know you first. I agree with that. But you're, I'm, I'm just saying, and the obviously initial... it worked out, but I'm used to a different type of pursuit. That's why this road has been very strange for me. Right. And obviously it worked out the way that I'm glad that it did. Mm-hmm. But what I realized, and we'll get to that later on in the discussion, is that the way that I, I'm used to being pursued actually was the characteristic of a lot of narcissistic men. Facts. Love bombing. I was love just about bombing. to say. Yes. I have been love bombed Your to whole the life. degree. <laughs> so when someone's not love bombing me, you, you I assume... Throw you off. It, they're not interested. I assume they're not interested because and, I'm used to a very like narcissistic approach. Yeah, and that's not me. <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> uh, hey, he said, he said we're going to even out the playing field. I'm trying yeah. to get to know you. You yeah. get to know me. Yeah. We're going to see if we got some alignment. There we got, I'm used there to the flowers go. and the chocolate and the very like direct statements of I like you I want to get to know you I'm even trying to see if you're trying to get married next summer what's yes. going on like that's what I'm used to and to yeah, me nah. that's insane to do that from the jump no nah, that's, that's, what that's I discovered. crazy yeah. yeah so my thing is so if it's not that then it's like oh you're, you're standoffish you don't yeah. like and it's like no that's not the case but so on the trip mm-hmm. were you interested at all or was it still just platonic because you remember you shifted from 2017 <laughs> to 2019 <laughs> I still be honest, you wasn't. But my thing is, I, I wasn't, I wasn't like interested in a relationship. But I was still interested and in really to getting her. to know exactly. her. Exactly. So it's platonic. So it's platonic. You want another friend? This Literally. is the thing, though. Before you get to her, it's steps. So I gotta at least be like, okay, I like this person. <laughs> I know it first. Yeah. So when you saw her on the trip, what did you think? Because um, she said you were standoffish. Did you? Were you? Were you feeling so like? So let me tell you. So let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Here you go. Because <laughs> I thought she was beautiful. She was actually the first person that was standoffish and nervous. nervous. Well, I was terrified, yeah. Mm-hmm. What were you Bef- terrified about? I just the, the chemistry was very strange. And, you know, even when me and you would talk on the phone, mm-hmm. just like it was just this very intense feeling that I couldn't really explain. It was very like... And so let me tell you how she set the tone for the trip. I remember <laughs> getting my bags, walking up. They were already... We were at this restaurant. restaurant. Mm-hmm. I was outside. And I was walking up with my... Um, suitcases. With my suitcases. Came from the airport. And mm-hmm. I sat down. I think I gave you a hug first. Yeah. I sat down, gave a, a hug. Everybody was already there. I was the last person to get there. And she immediately goes, can we go to the bathroom? And gets up and runs to the bathroom. So I'm like, did I do something? Like, yeah. what's going on? I grabbed Vicky and um, a friend that was also there with us. I said, can we go to the girls' room? Wow. As soon as I I was sat about to have there. an anxiety attack. Really? I don't know what was going on. How I've, long have y'all been talking to each other before this trip? Just a few months. We had been on the phone by then. But and it was, it was a, a like. A few times, like nothing. Yeah. yeah you know. 
But even when we'd be on the phone, like my heart would be beating out of my chest. Like it was just a very intense experience. So when he walked up, like I, I felt like I was having anxiety. It was very strange, mm -hmm. but you know, it obviously it turns out he's my soulmate. He's my person. So that it kind of explains why yeah, explains those it. emotions mm -hmm. felt the way that it felt. But it was just a very intense, I needed some space. So yeah. <laughs> we went to the bathroom and you know, I'm telling Vicky, I'm like, girl, I don't know what's going on. She's like, it's okay. Just calm down. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Why am I feeling like this? You know, you know, most men don't make me feel that way. I don't know. You know, I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything, but most men don't, you know, yeah. move me. But in this moment, I just, just some sort of like intense chemistry and it was very strange. So after we came back to the table, the conversation, you know, we had a nice conversation. It was a nice but, conversation, but I was still like, did I, you know, is she okay? Like, yeah. let me make, is she comfortable? Like, yeah. is she, you know? Yeah. So did she that start was, acting different when she came back? Um, I feel like I pulled myself together. She pulled herself together a little bit, but I yeah. could just still tell like it was some nervousness. And so, and it's also weird to be like overly pursuing somebody when you kind of feel like I don't know if they're necessarily it, it, comfortable right now. Right. Too. Mm. Yeah. 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 So our, our, I feel like our trip on top of like different expectations. Yes. There was a lot of energy. That the, was, the, the main problem is that. The expectations being different. There if there's go. different expectations, it's, it's like one person go. sitting up and like, this because she's hearing stuff from her friends saying mm -hmm. he's a great guy, he's this, this, this. You were you hearing anything from Ain't the nobody friends? talked to yeah. me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody so, so you ain't hearing nothing. I don't know nothing. I don't know yeah. this woman available now. I don't know yeah. this. <laughs> ain't yeah. nobody talked to me. Ain't nobody was like, hey, yeah. we just talked to Deshaun and Deshaun says it. And she ain't hit me up like, hey, I just talked was in Bahamas talk. <laughs> ain't nobody telling me nothing. But I was supposed to read the minds on the expectations here. So you over yeah. here in the dark. In the dark. And she over here getting gassed up about, hey, this such such. So such. Right. Yeah. And so now she's on this trip with high expectations. You like, hey, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just out here hanging out. Yeah, you know, whatever. And so then, how long was that trip? Just two, three days. Yeah, three maybe. days. <laughs> was there any a long time at all for y'all to just break away and talk? Just one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just one a long time, and nothing came of it. It was just a waste of my day. I just, you know, we we got a chance to kind of chat, but you know, you can tell even as a woman when a man is interested, and I just I didn't feel I didn't feel anything coming from him. So literally, the and you weekend, did that intentionally, huh? No, yes, you did. I didn't do that intentionally. If you were if, if you were interested, you if you want to keep it friendship, men know how to keep something friendship. Yeah, yeah. it felt friendly though. It, it did felt feel friendly. friendly, but it just didn't feel romantic. So you went, when you was looking at her, like when you walking around in bikinis and stuff, when y'all yeah, out we there, went to the beach. And... So when you looked at it, you went like, mm, no, nah, I was still like that though. Okay, but <laughs> I just feel like it's so. <laughs> It was still like that, but I feel like I just wasn't doing what she expected me to do. Yeah. So that that comes across in, in projecting in ways it's like it was a waste of my time. It was something we didn't really have a long time and stuff like that. And we did have a long time. We did, you know, have you did some stuff and you know I me. gave you a kiss. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> we did some stuff. Though. I tried so, 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 to make so, a move, but, but, but he had, wasn't but we, taking it either. <laughs> me back but i don't feel like there was anything romantic let me tell you this is why we honestly <laughs> we, we don't go. talk about this trip a lot because yeah. it's, it's, good. it's so her expectation was so unmet that sometimes it skews her mind when it comes to this trip i'm not and i Whoa. you know i love you but <laughs> okay. even when the trip to me the trip wasn't bad i felt like it was a pretty cool trip Listen to me. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. It, I, it was a and good it, trip. It, it's, it's a good, this is a good conversation because it's based on expectations. It's based, it's based on, on expectations. Because you left saying it was yeah, great. Yeah, it was great. I thought, you know, I thought it, you know, I thought we had a good time. A good start. A good start, a good start, a good trip. But I feel like because my expectation was not falling to my chief, I want to be with you. I can't I couldn't wait to get here. That even in moments where we did kind of have like really good times or a long time, she's not even seeing it. No, like she that. just she discredited it's like it. If all it way. wasn't she if didn't. it wasn't this, then it, this was a wrap and a waste of my time. Because you just said, because you, you, you called it a waste something? of time. No, you can't. You so, called it a waste of time. Yeah. I want to so, know and something. And so my thing is like, I can even hear when we talk about this trip and she says stuff like waste of time and stuff like that. <laughs> I, as a man, have to be like, don't even take offense to it. Yeah. Because I know that this is how she feels because her expectation of me yes. was not met. Facts. Okay. Let's leave it to facts. That. I want to know something. Go ahead. Ask him what happened after the trip. Oh. What did he do he after the you. trip? What, what happened? Silence. Yeah. 
He was yeah. You weren't interested at that point. That's what I'm saying. You wasn't. So you you have this Nobody's very strange you know, narrative, he, like oh you know I thought missed, it, I thought it went great. So why you, you didn't hit me up after? And she you and you didn't call her afterwards. <laughs> 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 no, complete I thought that silence. was like you thought Guess that was like friendly long. Bahamas no, no. time. I just Guess we're in Bahamas. Long. It's beautiful. Guess how long the silence went Mom, for? Mom, Mom. Guess. I want you to guess. <laughs> You better not say a year. A so, year. <laughs> a year. I'm not the bad guy. And guess what? I guess. ended up in another relationship. Of course, because you. I ended up in another relationship because I, I, I pursued. I said, "Let's go to the Bahamas." Nothing. I'm thinking, okay, we go back from the Bahamas. Okay, maybe it didn't go the way that I thought it went. Okay, mm -hmm. but you're saying all that, but you still didn't hit me up after the Bahamas. But it's okay. So what happened with that, Marvin? Um, you see how it just don't be making sense. <laughs> Like, oh, well, I thought the trip went good. So then Mom. why didn't you hit me up? But I just thought it was like a, it was a, a nice, friendly trip. <laughs> anyway. Then, but I, I, listen, I can't make excuses Crazy. for I really wasn't interested at the time. That's why I want you That's to just say. That's why I want you to just admit. That's why I really just you want you to interested. say. Because Mara, peep this. Listen. It's, you really just got to admit. Hold on, Mara, you got to peep this. Mm -hmm. I have a whole lot of female friends, and I talk to them about guys that handle them the way you just handled her. Exactly. And the advice I would tell them He's not interested. He's not interested. I'm not, but There's okay. a whole book that says he's not. He's just not that into you. Yes. At the end of the day, a man, when you are interested, you will yes. state it. You will call it. You you've you and you you've already saw it. In 2017, you was like, hey, and the intentionality that you had to even inquire about her, which is the first thing that a man should do if he's interested in a woman, is to inquire. Right. And so you inquired about her, then she's not available. Boom. Now she's now she's stepping in outside of her feminine role, and now she's becoming a pursuer, which is something I always tell a woman not to do. Mm. I say men should pursue and not persuade, and mm. a woman should present and not pursue. Mm -hmm. She presented herself. That's all she does in pageants is present. Mm -hmm. And then here she is now. She's pursuing you. Hey, you want to go on this trip with me? When she first said that, I said, oh, she, okay, you're going on a date. You know what I'm saying? Because if a woman is asking you, it's so many women that ask me to go on trips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'd be like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because I already know what I'm setting the tone for. And they're like, right. no, we can just go on a trip. We can just hang out. I said, mm -hmm. no, because I know what that means. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to go on a trip with a woman. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, are we just platonic? I don't operate like that. If I'm on a trip with you, we're going to be on a trip mm -hmm. together. We're going to get back. We're going to say it was a trip. So at the end of the yeah. day, it's mm -hmm. not going to be all we hanging out. We we don't do that. That's not my, <laughs> that's not my home girl. That's not my sister. That's no, we going to, we going to, we going to share spaces. You know, I hope I wish somehow my brain can switch off and we can go on a trip and, she has a hotel room and I have my hotel room right. or whatever. But the only time I want to even share that level of space with somebody is somebody I'm intentional about. Other right. than that, I don't, even, I don't even want another woman to have that level of access to me in that type of mm. environment. Okay, yes. so question. So when she brings up a trip, like, and I, and I actually wholeheartedly agree with what you're saying, too. So my thing is when it comes down to somebody, especially a woman, inviting a, a a guy on a trip um and if it even is oh i'm going to visit my friends right we have mutual friends did you want to go and it's like oh, okay yeah I'll, I'll go on that trip so that's the case that happened right so at what point is <laughs> so do you think i should have just been like no nah, i'm not going if you, if you ain't interested have, so you don't yes. think you don't if I wasn't interested, or I would tell her straight up, hey, I'm going to go on this trip because me and so-and-so were talking about seeing each other anyway, mm -hmm. but I just want you to know there's no expectation. If you see me hollering, I, I, I give women the cold reality. I say, how would you feel if I started talking to another woman on that trip? If I saw a girl on the beach and I went and asked her for a phone, mm -hmm. them, how would you feel? Mm -hmm. And then she says... I mean, I wouldn't like that. Well, that mm. means it's not a platonic trip. Right. Okay. Because if I'm going on this right. trip with you, I am going as a single man and I can go talk to whoever I want to. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that. And they'd be like, well, hold on. I don't think I like that. Well, hold on. Well, don't go. And I'd be like, okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. So so, so my thing is, do you think at any point, I guess I guess my question is, so it for the woman doing that, do you think that maybe, 
Oh, I'm trying to see how I should have said this. You're trying to save this. yourself. I don't no, want you no, to be honest. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to save you. Save you. Save me? Because yeah. I actually don't think I actually really need saving in this yeah, situation. Because what he's trying to say, to say. Yeah, because what he's, I know he's about to lean to is about the fact that the fact that you asked him out. The fact uh-huh. that you even asked him on the trip, which is what I was saying earlier, is that you started operating more in the, the masculine energy, which was pursuing him in that moment. But the, because but he the wasn't thing is, moving. Yes. But the thing is, though, it was masked behind. And I get that this We're going to our friends we're, we're gonna, gonna be, we're gonna be my friends. That's what made it a little tricky. That's, that's what made it. it that's yeah. what made it a little tricky. So if it was a, if it was a, if it was a trip where it been like, a hey, I'm trip. going out, I'm going to the Bahamas. You want to come with? You want to come with me? I'd have been like, okay, wait. <laughs> but if you're going to, you go every year to visit Chris and Vicky, yes. and you're going, and you know that's our mutual friend, and you're inviting me on the yes. trip. That's that. She did it slick that she, way. She did it slick. Yeah. And so she my did thing, real slick. so my thing is, if you were slick enough to invite me on this, and then you have expectations without getting the confirmation or the reassurance first that this is even right. a mindset that I'm in because you actually don't know if like where my head is when it right. comes to relationships too so it's it that it's that gets a little mixed up it does it gets a little mixed and, and, up and, and so the 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 situation with the friends is what for her softened it because she's saying oh we can be comfortable in this mutual type of environment with both of us so it softened it where it wasn't so heavy romantic right. but her mind couldn't shift from saying I want to still see if there's something between us. Exactly. And okay. So she wanted to see if there was some type of romance between y'all whatsoever. Let me jump in here. Jump in here. I would not have invited anybody to meet me anywhere if I had not known that you had inquired about me. That's there it. it. Is. So it's, it's it, granted it is pursuing someone, which I'm never a fan of women pursuing men. Hold mm-hmm. on a second. Go ahead. Um, I still feel in my mind as though I invited you because I had heard you were told. that yeah. you had inquired. But yeah. listen to me though you in- invited me off an inquiry from two years ago fair you don't yeah. know any you you haven't even followed up you didn't even go like hey so chris and vicky told me that you were interested in me or something like that or uh-huh. even have a conversation talking about anything that could remotely go to rom- a romantic relationship you just kind of went off of assumptions Often my thing is especially assumption off of something two, two years, years, ago. years ago. Yeah. Fair. And then invited yeah. me on a trip and kind of masked it with the, oh, well, I'm just going to see my friends. Just come with me to go see hang out with me to go see my friends. Fair. Yeah. So here we are. Here and we that's are. good. But see, that's good because it's other people that will be watching this that's in that little slippery slope where they're oh, yeah. they're mm-hmm. they're assuming stuff. They're like, well, he calls me every day. That means he wants to be, marry and, me. And see, yeah. and, and, like, and my thing is also like you can't don't do anything. I feel like you should always have a, a conversation or an understanding. 100%. Of, of period. Always. Before you even make any moves so that you actually do know, am I going to waste my time here? Yep. And and my biggest thing is like, even when even when I was dating before the, dating her, it's like, let me make sure, let me tell you what my intentions are. Yep. And let me mm-hmm. tell you what type of, and you tell me what type of time you are so that I know Hey, this is something I can lean into, or hey, this is something that we can go. We're on two diff- two separate pages right now. Facts. I think that it's okay every now and then for a woman to step forward and attempt to see if there's something there. One hundred percent. So that's what I did. I found out at the trip that there's nothing there, <laughs> <laughs> and I went home. Mm-hmm. We never spoke for a long time after that, and mm-hmm. I ended up in a different relationship. So and how I long think- was that relationship? Uh, a little over a year. I think it was like maybe a year and some change. Mm. So really, I went down there because I was chatting with him and chatting with another gentleman. So it was really like Y'all figuring out that? which one. <laughs> I was a, all this smoke, I, and I was an option at the time. <laughs> All this smoke. Ladies, keep your options open. Keep your options open. Keep your options open. But I'm the bad guy. Never put your eggs in one basket, ladies. All this smoke. Always have another one available. All this smoke. And was like, well, I actually was talking to somebody else. But she gave you priority though. Mm. Exactly. She gave you priority. Tell him, she gave tell you first right of refusal. What happens? Is, it's called first right of refusal. So what happens 100%. when you're negotiations with movies or books and all that yes. type of stuff? Somebody says, "Hey, listen, I want the first right of refusal. I see the 100%. value in what you, uh, mm-hmm. the product that you have, the terrace. So even other products that you may create, I want first right of refusal. So you can come to me and say, "Hey, I created this, and let me decide first whether or not I want you." Exactly. So she gave you first right of refusal to be able to say she. Say, oh, yeah, I got this other guy right here, but I really like, like him, him more. Yes. And so she said, now, if he pull the trigger, 
the, this other dude's gonna fall by the way. I don't even care about him. 100%. And then when you didn't, she was like, well, dang, why should I? Uh, I'm going to go where I'm celebrated and mm -hmm. not just tolerated. So she says, so here it is with this other guy. He just tolerating me. And that's Marvin. He's tolerating me. And this other guy, is, he's pursuing me. He trying mm -hmm. to, he, well, dang, am I being stupid right now? Well, let me go and entertain that. And yeah. that didn't work out too well. It either. didn't. And <laughs> it, it didn't work out. But what I will say is that I'm, you know, every woman, you know, go out there Make your attempt. See if he's interested. If he's not interested, sis, move on. He'll be back soon. If he's actually, <laughs> he'll come back eventually, right? So you know, like in my mind, okay, good trip in the and Bahamas. That's for everybody. Good trip. Okay? Everybody needs to men like included. Men, yes. But facts. you know, take shoot your shot. If they don't catch it, then you just gotta move on. You, gotta move I on. Just, I, you know, you still have to have some dignity about you. <laughs> so you know, if clearly if they're not interested, it's okay to move on, which 100%. I did. And then we reconnected a year later, and a year later, oh my gosh. Very what? intentional. Oh, what happened to your I was later? ready for a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately. What happened, Barbara? Come testify. Um, I How y'all run into each a, other? A year later. <laughs> it was Instagram again. <laughs> a year later. So a year later, I was actually. And we were still, we were still like random. It was still somewhat like random. Oh, Likes and about? comments and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we still didn't have yeah. a conversation. No yeah, no conversation. So, mm -mm. so um, yeah, I was just at a point where I was very solid in my career. I did, you know, I, listen. This is textbook what I talk about. It is. It's about a man will, when he's ready, it's not, it's not, they always say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone asked mm -hmm. a question, do mm -hmm. men marry when they find the right one or the right time? Mm -hmm. And I guarantee both it's of them. Yeah. It's, no, but, but, it's, but it leads it has toward to the be, right time. But it has to be both of them. Yeah. yeah. But the right one can often, you, you can let the right one quote unquote get away. That's why it's stuff like, oh, she's the one who got away. You hear men say that all the time. She's mm -hmm. the one who got away. Why do you say she got away? But it It's because what happened is Go ahead. you saw her and you was like, yeah, this is wife and material, but you weren't ready. And then you watch her go marry somebody else. Mm -hmm. And right. then forever, my, my ex-father-in-law told me, he said, listen, she's the one who got away. He spoke about the specific woman. Mm -hmm. She's the one that got away. I said, why do you still say that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He said, mm -hmm. because that's the person who truly had my heart. But at the time, he was focused on real estate. He was focused on making his money. Now, hold on, and so now. he let that go on. So, mm -hmm. And so said he'll never even remarry or one, remarry at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. the one that got away. So is it a situation where she has your heart and you just not where you need to be? Can because be. I'm I'm talking about I'm not in a situation where if 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 you're not ready, ain't nobody got your heart. Right. So it, it, it's it's purely your time. And so I actually don't feel like any man should date if if your timing is not right. So 100%. I'm not saying you get involved with a, a, a woman, you you're doing all this, she has your heart, and mm. then you're not committing to her, you're not doing something yes. that's, that's very different from I'm not I'm not ready to date. For, nobody has my heart, but it's just where I am in life. And I don't feel like anybody should make an exception or blame themselves if your timing is not right. I totally agree with that because mm -hmm. you can yeah. go cause more damage to that woman exactly. without oh, yeah. a timing. Exactly. Well, I appreciate the fact that he didn't lead me on at all. That, that's what I respect. <laughs> and he, and he, he didn't lead me on yeah, whatsoever. It was I very respect clear. That. There weren't like mixed signals <laughs> at yeah. all. And, 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 and to tell you the truth, that's how I don't, I'm not finna lead you on and yeah. how you think into something that, that, that's, that's that, that, is, that it's not. So it's going to be very apparent whether I'm <laughs> whether interested I in and, and willing yeah. or, or, or I'm not. Yeah. Um, I feel like once you do blend those lines where you're not ready, but you're showing her, that's what I'm like, no, 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 you can't do you that. Just, you yes. have you a dangling on the hook. Exactly. And so that year later mm -hmm. or whatever, you pop back up, you said, hey, I, I'm 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 ready now. Yeah. So how yeah. you approach so that? So we actually had a conversation. Um, I was in the space where I'm like, okay, now I'm 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 ready to uh, look for a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually started back on Instagram. Back on Instagram. <laughs> it started in the DMs, and I feel like she had DM'd something. Uh, it was a picture of your beard, like something going on with your beard. Yeah, no, it wasn't a picture. It but. was. It was your selfie. It was your beard. Now tell me what you said. Yeah, what you say in the yeah, beard? Tell me what you said. It was something with my beard. Now tell me what, what you, you said. Say? Go ahead. I said he was looking real zaddy. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what's up with I your beard. I was still very enamored by him, and you know, that's and, and, good. And you know, I don't even know. 
I am the type of person for people that don't know me, but for the ones that do, they know I am not like I, I really practice feminine energy. I'm I'm military, just got the military last year, did 11 years. Yeah, I did 11 years in the military. <laughs> Doing what? And what, what branch? Well, it's reserve. So it's it was army God, um, no. logistics. So I did 11 years and um, so I was the first soldier to win Miss USA in 2016 really good stuff y'all there it is so there but i come is. from a military family my father mother sister brother are all army vets so i come from a very like um structured. i don't say it. yeah very structured <laughs> mm-hmm. very like direct i don't want to i hate using the 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 like alpha yeah. or you know like an alpha female but yeah. i would say that i have a lot of traits of being an alpha female and i've tried to work on that over the past few years so i actually agree with you when you say you know pursuing a man, leave it up to the man. You shouldn't be doing that. But he had me just so enamored. I just, I didn't know what the energy or what the chemistry was that was so intense. And it, Still was is. it because he <laughs> was it because he wasn't chasing after you like that as most no, men? No, because okay. I, you know every okay, look. whatever, <laughs> whatever. I didn't really recognize. Sometimes reverse psychology be working. Like it could, it could. Yeah, you be like, oh, why he ain't checking for me? It, <laughs> before I even knew that he wasn't fully checking for me, I still felt intense energy when he mm. landed in the Bahamas. We first hugged. Like I just felt something. Because that's intense. what sent you into that that into uh, the bathroom. Yeah. yeah, to have a break because I know what was going on. So that was even before that's I beautiful. even knew his like mm. pursuing I like that. direction. Yeah, I like yeah. That. I like it was that. nice. Mm-hmm. I like so that. I said, "You looking real zaddy ish <laughs> and. <laughs> We randomly got into a conversation about the Bahamas the year before. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> you got re-triggered. I got triggered. Re-triggered. I, did. I forgot what we what were we what were we I even forgot saying? What, I forgot what it was, but we got into a conversation about it. Um, and I remember we were going to get off because you were like, "Well, have a nice day." She got, she got triggered. Well, when we were de- well, we were DMing. Mm. I thought that you said something that was talking about the Bahamas, but you were actually. Oh, I was saying you for what was about the birthday? It was about my birthday. Yeah, I can't remember. You that. forgot to wish me happy birthday on oh, okay. my birthday in December of that year after oh, the Bahamas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I had brought it up or something like that. And you're like, oh, I'll do better next time. And I'm like, yeah, please do better. Something, something, yeah. something Bahamas. But it was like, you know, kind of flirt, sarcastic yeah. way yeah. of doing, you know. And mm-hmm. somehow you said something that, I don't know, I got bothered. I don't know how it went <laughs> happened, but I got bothered. Oh, I know what I did. What did you do? So it was a, um, <laughs> it was a, a Drewski um, yeah, meme. Yeah, it was Drewski, and it's yeah. Like, and it was like, um, you know, like the guy in the club, um, like when you kind of drunk and you whispering there, like, why are you always playing with me? You always know I've been serious about you. Yeah. So yeah. I, tried, I was, I was mixed signals, mixed signals. So I was, okay. I was playing. I yeah, I was playing with it. So I was just like, you know, just bend yeah. turn back and forth. Yeah. She was, she got triggered by. Well, that. I think I said, well, you know, you had your chance. Yeah, something like she that. She got triggered, and then you were like, oh, I was talking about your birthday. I'm like. <laughs> it didn't really remember that you were saying you were talking about my birthday but it wasn't my birthday yeah, it, no 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 it was it was the drewski comment was in response to something and i said you had your chance or something like that you screwed it up or something like that i don't remember you ain't say that it messed it up or it slipped or you had your something to do with you had your chance we should have read through yeah, these we DMs before we came on the podcast yeah, that's yeah. no that's funny but and so, I, and, so how yeah. did, and then she got off she got off mm-hmm. stop we, stop chatting so after that we I said, okay, I got to go or something like that. We got off Messenger. And mm-hmm. then I spoke with my dad. And my dad, I was like, there's this guy that I like. And I'm glad you actually have conversations with your father. I bro. do. That's yeah. That's good. We, I, me and him had really deep conversations. that I, I remember literally speaking to him face to face. I'm like, there's this guy that I have that I have a crush on. And like, I don't this know. I like, I like it when a woman has a, a father to bounce <laughs> ideas on yes. with it when it comes to relationships. Absolutely. And I I, show, I, literally, I showed him the DMs. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, clearly this is just a misunderstanding. He thought you were talking about something else. You're talking about something else. Mm-hmm. He's like, so much y'all young folks y'all know how to just talk stuff out (laughs) so he's like you need to call him and just let him know you know how you're feeling and Mm. i'm like oh dad i don't know about that like (laughs) i don't know i want to talk to this guy in at least a year we've only been you know instagramming whatever Mm -hmm. and he's like i just feel like y'all young folks have to do better just about having open and honest conversations yeah Yeah. so i said i this was right before thanksgiving in 2020 so Mm. i text him and i said hey can you get on the phone um anytime today he said yeah i'll give you a call in a sec so we got on the phone mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was really fireworks after that. Yeah, we, I think, well, first she told me how she felt about yeah. the trip and then she was trying to get off the phone. And then I was like, um, no, let's just stay on the phone. 
Yeah. And That's then good. so we talked That's after good. that. And then after that, then it was. It was it. Oh, yeah. It was just smooth sailing after yeah. that. He's just so intentional and like very sweet. Take your time, guys. <laughs> Be ready. Literally. If if there if there's a definition of a of a patient man that's like ready to just smoothly go through the process, no rushing, he is absolutely an example <laughs> of that. Don't rush it. Yeah, he doesn't rush it. Like just like very smooth. And you know, you're Gemini. I don't know if people really care about zodiac <laughs> signs, but you're an air sign. Um Yeah, but I, I think most importantly though, like, especially when it's like, um, I felt like let me really, really get to to know her this time. Hmm. Um, and I actually um, really, really do value and appreciate relationships. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like they should be rushed. I feel like you should actually take your time to get yes. to know the person because that sets the foundation for can I be with this person for the long rest term of my life. for the rest of my life? Yeah. But also like it's I have to really feel something about the person on the inside. Right. And then it's like. Okay, do we spiritually are we aligned? Mentally are we aligned? Um, are your virtues aligned? Like, mm -hmm. can you have a conversation? Are you open? And I remember we would have conversations and we would sit on the phone. I listen, I would be so late to work. <laughs> yeah, we'd be on the because phone. Because we all would be night. on the phone for like six, seven hours. I love sometimes. it. Than that, love yeah. it. Yeah. Long six What's the longest? Time. What's the longest you think, Deshaun? I think it's probably like nine. Nine? Year nine? Yeah, one it was bad. Because one time we got on the phone at 10, and we didn't get off the phone until 7 a.m., and Love you had to it. go to work at 8. Yeah, and I was in them <laughs> yeah. zombie. Yeah. But we just had so many yeah. good conversations. But I'm like, I have to pick this girl's brain because I need to know who I'm getting into a relationship with. Yeah. And then after that... Um, so at that point, so it was a switch where you said, no, I'm talking to her because I want to know her yeah. because I want to be in a relationship with her. Yeah. And it wasn't just some boyfriend-girlfriend thing. You said I, no, you no, was looking no. at her as wife. I was, yeah, yeah potential. Mm -hmm. And after potential. that phone conversation, we made it, it was official. You asked me to be your girlfriend probably like two, three months after that. Well, no, 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 no. After we went to thing. New Year's. Yeah. Um. So we planned a trip. So she was actually supposed, supposed to, to go, go to New Year's with- uh, <laughs> Las Vegas with my sister and her boyfriend, and they ended up canceling on me. Mm -hmm. But we were- I didn't want to go as a third wheel, so I invited him <laughs> to another trip. But at least by then, I knew we knew we, we knew. we knew so. You know, so conversations had been got had. It better we together know, that time. You know, yeah. So I was like, redemption, yeah, it was a redemption yeah. trip. And so we actually went to New Year's, and I, um, mentally in my head, I was like, this is not going to be Bahamas. Yeah. So I mentally went in there like, I'm going to make sure this time she knows yeah. exactly where I'm at. Where I'm coming from and knows my intentions. Did you feel? Mm -hmm. it? Did you feel that? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Huh? Such a beautiful trip. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful trip, and it was just you know ball dropping and like all these things happening. Y'all brought during the New, New Year Year's. that year in. What year was that? That was 2020 20. to 2021. Yeah. So y'all brought mm -hmm. in 2021 together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then a month after that. A month after that, yeah. He asked me to be his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I didn't say yes right away, ladies. You need to get some things cleared up before you say yes. I said, um, it was only took about three or four minutes, three, four minutes. What's your question? <laughs> three or four minutes. You don't say yes right away. I didn't say it was hours. <laughs> she said, don't say, I thought she had to I say hours. It was like weeks later. <laughs> it was about three, four minutes later. Three, four minutes. She said, I had to see later. his timeline for marriage. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's we good. did. Yeah, you did. That was the that. timeline that's for good. marriage. I, I said, I, I, you said, I got I would, but respect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. As a woman, by then, I was you like. You no girlfriend me to, for life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm three years older than him. So, you know, yeah. in my brain, I'm, I think I was 31 at the time. And I was like, listen, so what's your timeline for marriage? Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, you know, well, what are you thinking? I'm like, well, I would hope. Yeah. And I would like for us to be engaged in, within two years. And I agreed to that. Yeah. And he agreed to that. Yeah, if so. I don't know within two years, then <laughs> she ain't the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say it you know, again, Marvin. Yeah, Say it if again. I ain't know within two years, I knew she wasn't the one. It's so true. Yeah. I think that a lot of women were nervous to have that type of conversation. Yeah. We just jump into, yeah, I'll be your girlfriend. And then years goes by and you're like, yeah, so what's your timeline <laughs> for marriage? And then by then, y'all have been together for so long. And then now it's been five or seven years. Like, oh, you know, he's like 10 years, 15 years, maybe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you just got to have the conversation up front. Mm -hmm. So we had the conversation about engagement. How many kids, you know, what are even like, even a little bit about gender roles and stuff like that within the mm -hmm. conversation. So, mm -hmm. and then after we were like, okay, sounds aligned to me, mm -hmm. then yeah. we made it officially official. Mm -hmm. So, that's good. Then, 
He proposed proud of within y'all. two years. Yeah. Did good. Mm-hmm. You waited until the, the, the last day of the two years, Marvin? I <laughs> thought he was going to, but he actually was in t- within two months. He had about two months left. <laughs> I, I really figured that she was like, he going to wait until the day. I felt, we t- uh, we argued about it one time. Yeah, like, I feel I was like, like you're going to drag this. I was like, if it's in the two years, it's what we agreed to. So <laughs> we agreed to. You really can't have no problem. It was not a breach of contract. Right. We signed here. What are I you said, actually he mad about? Drag this, and but within two months was fair to me. Mm-hmm. But if you had if you had pushed it within two weeks, it would have been like it'd have been what a, a problem. <laughs> How you said we two agreed years. to? I it. just feel like you, people intentionally drag it to get your nerves and your anxiety up high. That's what my problem would have been. Listen, like, are you I'd dragging been like, this? Per page eleven per page on 11. the contract. You said <laughs> you said I don't know what's the Legitimately. issue. Legitimately. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what were you doing, Marvin, in that in that mindset for two years? You know, you you see this shot clock. Um, um, what were you thinking? Um, to tell you the truth, I, I actually knew that she was going to be um, my wife way before I even asked mm-hmm. her to be my girlfriend. Told you. Um, Men mm-hmm. always know that. Listen. Know. Men know. And it was for my conversations. And it was so funny because she really thought that we were having like Kind of like friendly platonic relation yeah. um, yeah. conversations. But you you, you, I was you vetting your wife, interrogating at, yeah. for your wife. Yes, but, but I'm trying to tell you. And so yeah. I knew even before I, I I really knew before the New Year's trip. But she did something on the New Year's trip that it really sealed the deal for me. And I remember talking to my dad about it. Yeah. Um. Is when we first got to Vegas, she surprised me with the um, helicopter ride around yeah, Vegas for New Year's. Mm-hmm. And my see, sister see, was so see, against see, it. See, no, men like but romantic see, gestures too. It was, I love it. I thought yeah. it was great. She was like, "You need to cancel it." No, 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 <laughs> don't do that. And I was like, "Girl, I, I just I, I'm you gotta a gift- be you. You yeah. gotta authentically be you in that thing." Oh yeah, I'm yeah. a gifting person. I'm a person that just likes to. Yeah, it was kind of a thank you. I don't know a thank you for coming, but it was just a really like a mm-hmm. thanks for taking this time out. You know, mm-hmm. and isn't that crazy that that's the thing that he he went and, to? And, yeah, and, 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 <laughs> but it was such um a selfless and thoughtful yeah. act that yeah. I was like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, she's it. Yeah, because you know when you, in 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 this dating world, especially with young folks, Talk it's, about it, it. it's mm-hmm. we always have this like exchange of sex for money yeah or like your time for money yeah thing so like a man going on a trip for a woman nowadays it's a lot of women that'll sit back and just be like he's supposed to take care of he's supposed to do everything and then in in turn you get my time or sex or and sex then, and then you mm. see these women getting outed on social media because yeah. like hey well hey you gotta come up on your end and of then, the bargain and, then, it's and like, then they ain't trying to have sex exactly. with them and then they blast them on social media yeah. right. and the woman like I can't believe that he you feel me to have obligated. Sex you're doing it. And, like, so, and so my thing is like you, you can't for? you can't feel obligated to somebody else's money. <laughs> yeah, right. and then get a problem when they feel obligated, obligated to your to body. You. So if you're gonna use that as currency, you can't be upset <laughs> when it's time to pay up. <laughs> yeah. And so for 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 the trip though, for her to just do something so. I was like, oh, she's gonna be my wife. And then my thing is like, she she gonna get ten times. This is gonna be ten tenfold. Yeah. She ain't never got to worry about nothing else. Yeah. And so when I asked her, I that little month after was like, okay, I was very sure. Let me make sure I'm completely positive. <laughs> um and then when once, he put his heart out there, I'm it's telling out there. You, when I'm men when men you. go and they love, it's like yeah. he can't he can't go get that back. He's yeah. like, cause he mm-hmm. what what most men do, they're thinking in their head, they're planning mm-hmm. in their head their whole life. Is this the woman I'm gonna give? Everything I have to. Yep. Right. Is she it? Mm-hmm. I cannot be wrong because I'm finna give her everything mm-hmm. I got. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, oh, it's gonna be hard for me to recover from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he's thinking, like he said, in those little conversations y'all having eight, yeah, nine she hours. Think it's just friendly. He's like, oh, friend, ha, ha. And I'm said, already he's like, like, he bent like, like, oh, yeah. Notes. <laughs> <"No." laughs> okay, she passed that test. So strange. Okay, so strange. There's like a, I don't know. He's, you're, you're still a very strange person, babe, and I love he's, you. He's, but, he's you know, horrible. I think, I think you or I feel like your ability to be very picky in particular is actually a uh, characteristic that I wish I had had and that, you know, sometimes the bar is just too low, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and I feel like even for myself, I just feel like the bar had just been too low for so many years where it's just everyone can access the bar. <gasps> but I feel like sometimes there's like this societal pressure, especially on black women, to just make sure that the bar is reachable. Mm. And I feel like we have to be careful about that because then if everyone can reach the bar, then there's no real standard of, you know, the shana, partnership. The shana, you just preached the whole sermon right there. <laughs> it, it, it is 
is the truth. So it's like his mentality, I envy that. I wish I had had that because, gosh, I wouldn't have ended up in any of the relationships that I had been in. So I think if there's any messaging you know, to come out of this story is mm -hmm. that we all should be very particular and specific and we should all be vetting people more deeply yeah. and we shouldn't be in a rush. We should be patient mm -hmm. to get to know people and go through the process of getting to know people. There's just like this rushed dating experience sometimes. And I'm so used to it. I'm conditioned to it that when I experience something else, I'm thinking to myself, what the heck? What's this guy is like, yeah, like this guy's moving with no sense of urgency, but really, <laughs> you know, he had his mindset on, yeah a particular career field, a particular goal, and he's going to take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, although I have my little feelings <laughs> about the process, mm -hmm. I am really grateful for the process because I do think that it put us, you know, in the right place that we needed mm -hmm. to be. The lessons that I needed to learn, I learned. And, and most importantly, I didn't end up with a narcissist. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, but, didn't end up with the love bombing and, and the person that's very toxic. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, especially when, in, you know, beauty queens, we know this for sure. A lot of men are so focused on how beautiful we are. Yep. And they jump at that. And then what they do is they miss the necessity that comes with understanding and learning who we are as a mm -hmm. person and not being so distracted by our beauty. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with someone that's not distracted by their, your beauty, they're 100% mm. focused on just getting to know you. Mm -hmm. It is a little <laughs> different. <laughs> different. Very different. <laughs> yeah, different. I didn't even but you know, I didn't even realize it so we ended up together. I didn't know that most men are just so uh, just so focused on the attraction. Yeah, yeah, well, you see it all the time. You see it on Instagram, the women that's posting their bodies and men yeah. liking it. They getting 50,000, mm -hmm. 100,000 likes on yeah. it. Don't know nothing about that woman, but it's like, will you marry me? They, yeah. uh, they dudes be DMing them, talking about you, you my mm -hmm. wife. You don't know uh, nothing about this woman. Oh, yeah. It's be a like, trap. you my wife. It's yeah. the craziest it's thing. A trap. But I love what you <laughs> said because that's so key is that oftentimes, those type of men are wanting a trophy. 100%. You know, uh, and, and a trophy looks a whole lot different than having a, um, I'm going to call it an award. Because at mm. the end of the day, you can get married to somebody and when you find your purpose partner, it's like, God, you captured my heartbeat. Yeah, you are you everything want. that I want. God rewarded me mm -hmm. with you. Yes. And instead of saying, here's my little trophy, I'm going to put up on a little shelf and be like, oh, so pretty. Y'all like that? It doesn't yeah. sustain either. It, it's not it sustainable. Doesn't. And so that's what's so beautiful about that so how did this proposal take place what 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 happened how we get to this 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 proposal um so um i actually asked her dad in march so we got um Engaged. i proposed in december of 2021 um, 2022, 2022. Mm -hmm. um that march we had a trip to go uh visit her family mm -hmm. and i pulled her dad aside had a, a really good conversation Where, where's family at what city in dc, in DC. okay mm -hmm. that's where you're from um and you're living in chicago you still live in st louis right yes and so um i had a really so your whole rule about dating long distance is went out the window huh no well listen <laughs> no 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 <laughs> From St. Louis to, to D.C. is a flight. Four and a half hour drive, though. Yeah. No, no, no. From St. Louis to D.C.? No, Remember from, from, from Chicago. So listen, so listen. Chicago is drivable. My my thing is, okay, this is four hours. I could do this. Oh, okay, yeah. But so, still technically but my, long, yeah, distance. long distance. It's long distance, but it, that's a little more manageable for me. If I really like the person, okay, like I could do this. Like, I, I'm not doing D.C. I'm not going to even spend time to get to know you because I know that's not going to work. Mm. But for four... But, for St. Louis to Chicago, I could jump on the road at the work. It'll be, you know, but I, I could had, do I, that. I had to challenge myself in that area a couple of years ago. I had met a woman and she lived in Houston and, uh, we asked, you know, at the beginning stages of, okay, I like you kind of, I'm kind of interested in you. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, I don't date long distance. So I said, it's a wrap. And that's yeah. a four hour drive. I said, oh, it's a wrap. She was like, it just, in Houston, I said, mm -hmm. if I can't come to you in th in 45 minutes, yeah. then that's long distance. But I want to be able to say, hey, I want to go see my woman to go there. And, and ain't nothing then, wrong with that. And then a couple of months later, I said, why am I putting God in the box? Mm. At the That's end of the what day, I'm yeah, yeah, I said I don't put God in the box. That the long distance will only because I'm very intentional. I say about time I meet you and we 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 figure out all this alignment, we're gonna be married within a year. So if I got to sacrifice for a year tops to actually reside in the same house, yeah. then let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's just yeah, four hours. but I was with you, Mar. I was like, listen, but listen, you was better than me because you said what four you said hours. was beautiful. It better be under four hours. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> you, it's been as long as it's under four hours. And I remember the first time that I drove to uh, yeah. Chicago, one of my homeboys had hit me up like, well, hey, what you want, bro? I was like, I'm going to Chicago. He was like, excuse me? I was like, yeah, I'm going to Chicago to see the shine. He said, you're on the road to go? Yeah. He said, oh, you like it? I was like, yeah, man, in the snow. In the snow. In the snow. It was in the snow. In the snow. That's what I love would make you do right now. I'm trying to tell yeah. you. If it was five hours. At, the, at, that moment, at that moment, <laughs> was it like that was motivating you or was it love? Oh. At that stage. At that stage, no. I, I knew she was my, I knew she was the one. So I was like, I'll do it. Yeah. Was it like a love? It was love. It there was it love. is. It was love. Love made you do it. Mm-hmm. And so then, um, and then you talked to her dad, told your dad, uh, told her dad the intentions in March. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. how did it go from March to December before you pulled the trigger? So, um. I started planning around uh, the end of July, August, um, and was just going through. And I and I wanted to do it on her birthday too to kind of make it special. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just knew everybody would be in DC. Yeah. Um, so I was, you know, I worked with her sister. Who Britt, shout out to Britt. She really, really helped me. She was my my eyes in DC while I was in St. Yeah. Louis. Um, working with the. Okay, I'm I'm a little hopeless romantic too, so I want to make That's sure good. it was like spectacular. Yeah, play it. yeah, yeah. I yeah. need yeah. to be like all the bells and whistles. So um, it was hard hiding it from her, especially when like you're with somebody who also is like your best friend too. It's right. the person that you want to tell everything to. Right. So it's like you yeah. gotta like. <laughs> I can't. I can't you know, tell this, you everything. Yeah, this is my happiest moment. Um, I can't share it with you. Yeah, just all that time was just spent planning. And, mm-hmm. it, and it went beautiful. Tell us about the engagement. What went down, Deshauna? So I thought I was going to um, a photo shoot, you know, content creation. So my sister was like, hey, for your birthday, we're going to plan you a, a nighttime photo shoot. So I got all dressed up and we walk in and there's this like six foot tall marquee letters that say, marry me. My whole family and friends are all over here in the side and... I'm just boohoo crying, and it was just—it was amazing. <laughs> Mind you, this is a person. I'm not gonna cry when you propose. <laughs> I really thought I wasn't gonna Why? cry. Why? Why? I did, I don't know if I'm a super emotional person. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Huh?" He said, not when it comes to like you know sappy sis, moments or sentimental, sentimental yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm like a sentimental crier. I think I cry when things are sad. Mm-hmm. So, what made you cry in that moment? Uh... I just really feel like I, I met the man of my dreams. Like, this is my soulmate. This is my person. And just the, the energy really took over. And it was just, it was such a beautiful experience. And I I just knew I found my lifetime partner. And How'd you feel watching her cry if she wasn't a crier? Um, <laughs> satisfied. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. I, you felt very good. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. It was emotional, but it was like, I got you. Yeah. yeah. yeah I knew I was going to get you. Yeah. Very and I feel like I just seeing all of her family and friends be yeah. there and just all just showering her with love, too. So yeah. it, it, was a, it was a really dope moment. It was a very grand proposal. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anything like it. What was it? Break it down. What happened? Oh, I, I was going to drop. I'm going to drop the video. Yeah, no, no, we're going to drop the video in yes, the video. Please drop the video. I'm going to put it right mm-hmm. here. So listen. So grand. Instead of her explaining the proposal, we're just going to show that right now. Don't know how much you mean to me, baby. I can't put it in words.
Wow, yeah. that was absolutely amazing. Uh, so listen, so how did you feel? You said it took so many months to cultivate mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. And now you see Deshauna crying. And then what happened after that moment? Um. Well, it wasn't. Well, we actually moved in. We moved we in moved together, in together three months prior to the proposal. So we moved in together in October. Mm -hmm. um, but the proposal wasn't till December. So I had already been moved into the house, and that was like in a whole nother anxiety experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was horrible. Um, <laughs> you know, because I had always promised myself I'm not moving in with no yeah. man, so it doesn't ring on my finger. I'm not this. I'm not that. But there were a lot of. Um, a lot of adjustments that I was making because I knew that he was going to be proposing. I just had a feeling people were starting to act a little weird. So, you know, <laughs> I knew it was coming and my lease was up and his lease was up. So we moved into a, a bigger apartment um, in St. Louis and I don't have any ties to Chicago. I just, Lose it there. I just jumped up and moved there one day just because <laughs> once COVID hit, no point in me staying in DC cost of living. Oh yeah. So DC I moved to Chicago no and oh yeah, it's something else yeah, and heard. the traffic. Yeah. So we had already been moving and moved in together. And I mean, once the ring went on, we, we went straight into wedding planning mode, mm -hmm. which is a whole nother beast. But we went to, yeah. to wedding planning. And, and, and shockingly enough, like, um, you know, when you feel like you get engaged, um, I was supposed to feel like this new sense of mm. relationship and responsibility <laughs> and a little bit of it I did. But it really just felt so normal, normal yeah. yeah that it really wasn't um big of a change like besides yeah. the ring on the finger yeah. like we still felt like that we were and I don't know if it's a testament to just how we were maneuvering within a relationship where we were really just um the communication was there the plan the vision was all there so it really was like okay this is the next step in our mm. vision like like we're really on it so it wasn't like a it was a, a relief from planning and a relief that was over but I really felt like this is still my, my person. And what's the date of y'all's wedding? Uh, December 10th, 2023. So it's a year from when the, the from proposal? From the, the proposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. A year from the proposal. What did your father say? Did he have any pushback about y'all living together? Oh, no, no, no. My dad is obsessed with him. He loves <laughs> That's him. My, yeah. I mean, like, anytime I even come to D.C., is Marvin coming? Y'all can stay at the house. <laughs> even they, they go out on the porch and have drinks and smoke cigar. cigars. <laughs> like, like, he was... Absolutely. Do you have any other brothers? Do you have yes, brothers? Yes, I have two brothers, okay. two sisters. So there's five of us total. And but he I just mean, he just welcomed him as a son. Oh, one hundred percent. Just everybody loves him. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you feel about that to be um, welcomed like that? I really, really do do appreciate it because I'm very family oriented. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, even when like, and I'm very old school. Like I'm not finna propose to this and not, and not talk, talk to, to her them. father. Yeah. yeah. So even talking to him, like developing that um relationship with him, her sister, stuff like that, I really do feel like when you marry somebody, in a way, you you, you, you become you, 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 no bl way. you're yes. blending exactly. you're blending yes. them families together. Yeah. So I really think that it's important to establish those relationships and that trust within the family. So, you know, that's my <laughs> you know, Ms. Boris, my guy. Right there. I love it when people's families get along and when the father is embracing the son mm -hmm. and the uh, you have your, your mom and dad. And oh, they, my my mom and dad. Listen. They're still together. They've been married for over thirty years. Yeah, and they are fantastic, mm -hmm. and have really created and you know just raised an amazing person. Where you know that's probably been one of our uh, bigger hurdles is me coming from a divorced family and now it's blended and kind of all over the place. And then him coming from a two parent household where we've had to really, I think our only real like stickler mm -hmm. in the relationship has been me understanding uh, what a relationship is supposed to look like mm -hmm. and him already knowing what it was supposed to look like. That's good. Because I'm, he's never been in a committed relationship. I'm actually his first, mm -hmm. was his first girlfriend. Um, and then now his That's wife. Deep. But, right. Yeah. I remember we talked about that and I'm a, I got I want to just touch on that real quick. Mm -hmm. First committed relationship ever. Why? Yeah. Um, had met the person that checks off all my boxes and meets all my goals. Even as just a little girlfriend. No, 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 we don't. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. <laughs> because I, I also feel like I'm not finna listen. <laughs> it's just I'm I'm always been I've always taken relationships really really seriously. Mm -hmm. To tell you the I truth, I see. I honestly really do. In so high school, I, you have a little girlfriend. I mean, though? I had a little girlfriend in high school, but that's like high yeah. high school. But in your adult life, but in my adult life, like I don't. 
And I also like if if I don't think that this is something that's gonna be long term, I'm not even finna play with you. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm not when it when I do get tired or we do break up, I'm not trying to find trying to go through none of the the drama of that. I'm not finna have nobody out here being like, oh, I think I think I'm in a relationship with Marvin and Marvin don't like it's it's it's, it's gonna not <laughs> it's not I'm gonna be none of, we don't have none of that. So <laughs> I feel like I just really take relationships seriously. And I think it's probably a no to my parents yeah. that like I know what it's supposed to look like. What am I supposed to be looking for? How what's the process gonna be? When doing it when you're ready, not yeah. rushing yeah. into things. Um, and then also not playing with anybody's feelings because I believe what you put out is what you get in. That's so good. Yeah. I know that I want a person that has all the same characteristics and traits that I do. I'm not finna do other people dirty expecting to get the woman of my dreams. That's like good. I'm putting the good energy out. So when it's time for me to find my wife, I get that good energy back. I can't do nothing but respect it. Yeah. It's true. Never heard it, never seen a day in my life. I ain't <laughs> never seen nobody that just never been in a relationship. Those type of guys typically don't ever be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. He went from one extreme to the next. Never even had a girlfriend, but then to put a ring on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I salute you, King. Yeah. yeah. Like that that's that's nothing but respect because that means that you are extremely intentional yes. about this woman. Facts. And that means that you ain't gonna be a type of guy that when problems arise that you're gonna be like, we we, we you know, you're gonna throw the D word around. We I, we need a divorce. We yeah, need a divorce. Yeah. You're gonna be like, Hey, I'm locked in. Yeah. And you have that beautiful example of what, thirty five years? How long your parents? Yeah, thirty four. Yeah. 34 years of 34 marriage. years of marriage mm-hmm. to be able to say, hey, let me tap into my dad. Dad, listen, all right, we're listen, going through this right listen. now. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? He said, son, yeah. I need you to do X, Y, Z. And yeah. hey, just be patient. You know, women, hey, just this, this. Your mama, you know your mama used to do the same. <laughs> you know, those type of stuff. You know your mama, you know, mm-hmm. you know that type of stuff. That's beautiful that y'all have that. And it's beautiful that you're aware of what you didn't have, yes. yet what he has. Because if you, if you weren't aware of that, then you wouldn't know how to show up. Exactly. Because you like ain't nothing wrong with me, and he like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> right. why are you fighting me in this right here? I'm trying mm. to help you. Like I don't know, you just tripping. You act like you better than me. Mm-hmm. It's not. I'm not acting like I'm better. I just mm-hmm. seen this. Seen things. I just yes. seen some things yeah. that we can work through. This. This. Not. You ain't got to run all the time. You ain't got to yes. throw in the towel. And all that time. comes. And that comes with my patience too, though. Like, yeah. It, yeah. It's also like. We, we both have to be patient with each other because we both come from different. So that when I know that when stuff, when we reach these big milestones, even if she has a little anxiety or a little fear, hmm. and I'm just like chilling, we here like what's next? Yes, you know, I gotta I gotta be able to be patient, <laughs> yeah, and understanding from what what how what her perspective looks like when it comes to dealing with that. Because he's actually a very optimistic person about love, and I'm actually very pessimistic about love. Mm -hmm. Like I have, um, or more, I'm a realist, I'll say. Like I know that sometimes things just don't work out. And in his mind, that's not even an option. So it's like we, (laughs) as we've kind of maneuvered through the relationship, even moving in together to me, like I'm having an intense anxiety attack, even when he put a ring on and I'm having an anxiety attack. Like it's just all these moments where I'm just afraid. But why did did you embrace it though? Um, I embraced it because (sighs) I just don't know if I can sit in just the fear of things not working out. I think in my mind, Mm -mm. I just have to be hopeful. Listen, tell her what it is. Is it wrong? <sighs> no, it's beautiful. It's, it's 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 beautiful that you're willing to embrace it. Um <laughs> yeah, I did a whole heartbreak healing from heartbreak episode. So a lot of stuff you're saying is yeah. is is making so much sense, but it's triggering. It's like, oh, yeah, I, yep, those are conversations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh but I always say um, do it afraid. Joyce Myers afraid. used to say, do it afraid. Do Just it do afraid. it afraid. Mm-hmm. Because on the other end of that, there's so much promise. There's so yes. much hope. Mm-hmm. If you operate in fear for the rest of your life, uh, fear, the acronym of fear is false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. False evidence appearing real. And you go, how can it be evidence if it's false? Well, it's because you've made it such a real thing in your mind. Like you even said it. You said, I'm just more realistic when it comes to relationship. That's not realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Everything failing is not realistic. And to tell you the truth, right. I, I tried to... The possibility <laughs> of failing. To me, the it's possibility. The, it's, 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 still, it's putting the seed out yeah. that it can fair, fail. So fair. for me, it's still pessimism. It's it not is. realism. It I mean, is. I know that it's, my it's perspective pessimism. is wrong. I know it's wrong. <laughs> Wrong, and I, I think that that's why we really need each other and 100%. why I really need him and he really needs me as I feel like that optimism is what we need in the relationship 100%, 100%. for any relationship to get to 
death do we part, mm. it has to be optimism. Mm -hmm. yes. It can never be, well, I mean, it's real. If, if, if some things just don't work out. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, so you want us to get a divorce. I'm not saying that, but stuff happens. No, no, it's not. <laughs> like, that's it's not, not the perspective we need. No, we right. just saying vows. We're going to be saying vows to say through sickness and health, for richer, for poor, for all. We, we're right. talking about all these extremes of one another, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're saying we're going to still make it. You mm -hmm. can't be like, but I know we said that, right. but <laughs> it still may not work out. Yeah. Yeah. No, you need to be optimistic no matter what we go through. We're going to mm -hmm. weather through it. We love yeah. each other. We're going to talk about it. We're not going to allow little foxes to destroy the vine. We're mm -hmm. going to have yeah. conversations. We're going to keep tapping into each other. We're not mm -hmm. going to run away from each other. We're going to pull towards each other. In moments yeah. where there's adversity, we're going to just dial into each other yeah. the more. And I, I feel yes. like we actually, the more, the longer that we go, that gets easier. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because dad, she starts yeah. founding found in foundation. In so it's trust. Oh, yeah. yeah. The tr um, and that's what it is. That's yeah. trust. And it I, is the trust. And in the beginning of <laughs> yes. the relationship, in the very beginning of the relationship, I had a really, really good conversation with my dad um, because I actually, one of my things for my relationship actually was um, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who has trust issues. Hmm. And then God gives me the perfect woman. Who has trust but issues. she has trust issues. Trust issues. So, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't run away from it, but I, I was like, this is, this is going to, this is going to be a test. 100%. This is going to be a test. She checks off all these boxes, but the reason why she has to trust issues and not because of you. Right. And so I had a, a real good conversation with my dad. He was like, she's an amazing woman. You're just going to have to be an amazing man so that you can help her heal through that. And then y'all will be together forever. Mm -hmm. So he was like, that's going to take patience and it's going to take you being trustworthy so that she gets to a point and over time, you're not going to have to deal with that at pessimism all. at all. It's going to yeah. be purely optimism. Yeah. So I just made sure that like, I'm somebody that she can trust and we had that foundation and as we go along that, that it, it dies down mm -hmm. yeah that's why it's not a sprint it's a marathon I'm telling you listen mm -hmm. man when I tell you y'all got me excited it's funny how we start off start off a little rocky be like okay now why y'all why y'all why y'all get married again Lord Jesus y'all need to go y'all need to go through marriage counseling premarital counseling or whatever oh, and then, but it's good though when you start talking about and that's the reason why I love the Dear Future Wifey podcast we're not just gonna talk about all the little pretty stuff we're gonna yeah. talk about this yeah. is where it hurt because most relationships fail in that moment oh yeah and and the fact that y'all overcame that lets us know that y'all had some real conversations in order mm -hmm. to overcome it and then when you still talk about those things it's still a little like Hmm. Because again, mm -hmm. she, she was still operating outside of what she was supposed to operate in that mm -hmm. feminine energy. Mm -hmm. So then yeah. she got you met her with what you met her with, and mm -hmm. she threw all the way off, and mm -hmm. she had to recalibrate. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love that y'all have something, this energy between each other, this mm -hmm. God where uh, it's drawing y'all toward each other, where she can't shake it, mm -hmm. and um, that's what's gonna keep y'all, you know, till death do we part. And I respect that. Hey, y'all give it up for, I'll make sure I don't call y'all. I want to call y'all the Eccles, but y'all <laughs> still waiting on that, mm -hmm. that, that beautiful wedding. Um, and um, so I give it up to my people, my homie, Deshauna Barber and Marvin Eccles, y'all. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship Slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. 
None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTeris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, I really enjoyed this episode. I love that Deshauna and Marvin were transparent and vulnerable in this moment. They allowed us to get a, a sneak peek into their lives as they unpacked something that was kind of a, a touchy subject in their dating journey. You can still see that um, still need to be resolved. And I love that they were vulnerable enough to allow us to unpack that on the Dear Future Wifey podcast so that we can have a reference to know that, yeah, some things may not, um, our expectations may be a little different in certain areas, but let's challenge ourselves to show up in those conversations so that we can have those conversations from a healthy perspective. And, um, you know, I, I love that about them. So shout out to you, Marvin and Deshauna, for allowing me to unpack that on the podcast. Listen, if you're in Atlanta or even if you want to travel into Atlanta, we'll be at New Birth on March the 25th, this coming up Saturday. I can't wait to see you in the building, live podcast recording, dynamic panelists. Um, I, let's see, do I want to try to name them? Let's see, we have Stefan Speaks. Jesse Wu, Christian Keys, Destiny Payton, um, Willie Moore Jr., Travis Malloy, Stacy J. Johnson, and Carrie Turner. I was able to name them all. Man, when I tell you, it's, it's, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. It's my birthday weekend. Those have been DMing me. Asking me, can I send you something for your birthday? As y'all know in the past, y'all have asked me that. I've kind of just deflected. But this is a season for me to receive the love that um, I give out. You know, I'm a giver, and it's so hard for me to receive. And so I'm being challenged. I'm being challenged uh, to receive. And so I went and got a P.O. box last week. Uh, the P.O. box is... Dear Future Wifey, P.O. Box 3937, Cedar Hill, Texas, 
75106. That's Dear Future Wifey, P.O. Box 3937, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75106. So whatever you decide to send, cards, whatever, uh, I greatly appreciate it and I thank you so much. Here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. By the way, today's my mama's birthday, so shout out to my mama. Dear future wifey, expectations. This is a powerful word, expectations. A strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. A belief that someone will or should achieve something. You and I will step into love and marriage with our own set of expectations. It is our individual responsibilities to articulate those expectations so we don't hold the other accountable to an invisible bar or chalk line of achievement. Open communication will be our superpower. Humility, compassion, and forgiveness will be the foundation of our love. Safety, emotional, physical, and spiritual. We will trust each other because our hearts and intentions will always be pure for one another. Let's do love together. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.